This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? Well, February is sweater weather. I don't even think we need the sweater today on the day that we're filming. We're getting some rain today, so we've got this open for this arugula. I get a nice soaking in here behind us. The cold frames are getting wet. All the stuff we planted in the fall is doing great, and we're actually going to be planting some seeds outdoors today. So that's next. Our first job is going to be something called winter sowing, and usually when I do this, I'm throwing the seeds over a blanket of snow this time of the year. Not, uh, not today. Look at this stuff. Looks good. And I found out a few years ago when I had some radishes left out here, I threw them onto a bed and a month later they sprouted on their own. They're just mimicking nature. In nature, a radish will come up, flower, go to seed, and then throw that seed and sprout the next year when it's ready. And that's what these will do too. I'm combining carrots and radishes together. I always do that when I plant radishes because the radishes will come up first. And with all these seeds, they're going to be tight together. I will thin them and those thinnings, those go into a salad. Those are highly nutritious, something called microgreens. And then after the radishes come up 30 days later, they're ready to pick. And as we pick them, we leave room for the carrots, which will come up about three weeks later. And I'm just going to mix these two seeds together and then we will get them onto the compost. This is an Easter egg blend for the radish and then also some mixed colorful carrots. All right, we're all mixed together. And we're just basically going to make a carpet of greens here when they're ready. And I'll tell you, I can't wait. <laughs> This is not a time to be turning over your soil either. This compost was just sitting here. We can't turn the soil over until it's ready. If it sticks to the shovel, it's too wet. All right, next up, we are going to cut some branches and bring them inside for some beautiful blooms. There are lots of plants that put on buds the year before for their spring blooms. This is a forsythia, that's one. One of the most common examples and easiest to see is on a rhododendron. They have those big buds ready to bloom in May. We can cut those and force them to bloom early. The trick is we want to get to them as close as we can to when they're actually blooming. We're going to start with forsythia. Pussy willow will be a good thing to start now, but later in the season we could do dogwood, azalea, rhododendron, magnolia, anything that has its buds on there. And this is pretty easy. We're just going to cut some branches off and then take it from there. And we're going to have some pretty yellow flowers. Whoa. Okay. All right, now join me in the greenhouse for the fun part. So here's how we get rid of that frustration from sitting inside all winter. Take Dad's old ball-peen hammer, and we're just going to smash the edges of these forsythia onto this piece of wood. And this will allow the plant to uptake all the water it needs. That's all there is to it. We're going to put it in a vase. And in about a week, you can see this is just budding. Tomorrow, these will all open up and we get a taste of spring a little bit early. It is going to get cold again. Now, out in the garden, I use a lot of my grandparents' tools and I wanna show you how I keep them in shape and how you can get yours in shape for the season too. So some of these tools are from the 1930s. This was my grandfather's edger. I still use it. You've seen me on the videos. And number one thing, we start just cleaning them off with a wire brush, getting any loose dirt off. Next thing for the metal part is gonna be a little coating of oil. What that does is retards rust and also keeps the water off. One little trick you could do is you could have a five gallon bucket filled with clay sand and a quart of oil in the tool shed. And every time you come in with a shovel or something like this, you can just put it in there and it takes the dirt off, gives it a little coating of oil. Like I said, I want these tools to last for another generation. When you are buying tools, buy the best ones you can. So here we got our metal part looking good, but 
sharpness is really important. And something I really never thought about until I spoke to some sheet metal workers who told me, get this edge sharp and it makes your gardening a lot easier. And it does. This is a tool called Auger Sharp. I have another one called AccuSharp. It's $10 and it works great, been using it for years. When this side of this carbide sharpener is done, you can flip it over and you got more use out of it. And all you do is take it along the edge here and kind of run it over like that. And you can see the edge coming on there. This thing's seen a lot of, a lot of duty out there. We do this with hose, shovels, anything with an edge like this. And what else are you gonna be doing this time of the year? Get your tools ready, make them last for a while. The wood handles on these old tools are awesome. Good, strong ash, keep those in good shape. I'm using something else, it's called boiled linseed oil. <laughs> One time I was speaking to a group and somebody raised their hand and said, how long do you boil it for? No, you just buy it as <laughs> boiled linseed oil. And we're just gonna coat the handle. And what this does, so it keeps it supple, won't crack this way. And I'll actually let this dry and do it maybe one or more times again, two, three, and that'll be good for the season. I might do this also mid-season if I have time. The only thing that we don't use, a tool that sharpens both sides of a blade, is something called a bypass pruner. This could be a hand pruner, in this case, loppers. And a bypass pruner means that the blade bypasses the anvil, see that? And if you look closely, you can see that there's a bevel already here. And we're gonna take a sharpening stone. We've got a coarse side and a fine side. And this blade looks pretty good. There's no divots in it. And we're just gonna kind of run it along that same angle to keep it sharp. And you know the difference between a sharp pruner or lopper like this. It makes all the difference in getting the work done. All right. I got a few other tools to do here, then we'll finish up. Don't forget to check me out online. I've got lots of other garden stories there, more videos, and a blog post from Phipps where I spent an hour photographing the orchids in the Orchid and Tropical Bonsai show. I had so much fun there. And don't forget to feed the birds. And until next week, that's what I'll be doing. We'll see you then.